this is Paul, yeah, and uh, it's about 7.20, you know, uh, <laughs> I woke up this morning and I thought that uh, there's a possibility that God is angry, and as much as you might really not care about if God is angry or not, <laughs> I decided to look for the word in the dictionary, and it doesn't have anger as an actual word that it defines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it does have the anger of God in a lot of the words that are defined. Pope. Now, let's say you woke up and um, you thought, oh my gosh, uh -huh. God is angry and... You are upset that God is angry because you think God should never be angry. <laughs> well, the word that's before uh, the word uh, anger mm -hmm, that is not in the dictionary is um, angels. Yeah. Angel of the Lord. Po. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, for all of those that wanted to be in the come to find out family of non-human beings. Mm -hmm. I have a difficult time thinking that you have an angel since you were manufactured or you're some sort of top secret uh, genetic experiment. <laughs> now, these angels, okay, mm -hmm. by the word angels, yes, in examples, messengers of God, we ordinarily understand a race of spiritual beings of a nature mm -hmm. far, far above that of man, Pope. Although infinitely, infinitely removed from that of God, whose office is to do him service in heaven, and by his appointment to succor mm -hmm. and defend men and women on earth. <laughs> now, uh, scriptural use of the word, mm -hmm. there are many passages in which the expression mm, angel of God is certainly used for a manifestation of God himself. <laughs> Genesis twenty two eleven with uh, Genesis twenty two twelve and Exodus three two and Exodus three six and Exodus three fourteen. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It is to be observed also that side by side with these expressions we read of God's being manifest uh, manifested in the form of man also to Abraham at uh, Mamre. Mm -hmm. Genesis 18, 2, and 22. Mm -hmm. uh, comp, there's like uh, some sort of abbreviation there. I don't know what it means. Genesis 19, 1. Mm -hmm. To Jacob at Penuel, uh, Genesis 32, 24, 30. To Joshua at Gilgal, <clears throat> Joshua 5, 13, 15, etc. Besides this, uh, which is the highest application of the word angel, we find the phrase used of any messengers of God, such as such uh, as the prophets. <laughs> Isaiah forty two nineteen, Haggai one thirteen, Malachi three one, the priests. <laughs> Malachi two seven, and the rules of the Christian church is obviously Revelation one twenty. Mm -hmm. Now the nature of angels, angels are termed spirits. <laughs> as in Hebrews 1.14, but it is not asserted that the angelic nature is incorporeal. <laughs> not quite sure what that means. Incorporeal. <laughs> the contrary seems expressly applied in Luke 20.36 and Philemon 3.21. The angels are revealed to us <laughs> as being such as man might be and will be when the power of sin and death is removed. <laughs> Because always beholding his face, Matthew eighteen ten, and therefore being made like him, first John three two, their number must be very large. <coughs> first Kings twenty two nineteen, Matthew twenty six fifty three, Hebrews twelve twenty two, their strength is great. Psalms a hundred and three twenty, Revelation five two, eighteen twenty one, their activity marvelous. Isaiah six twenty six, Matthew twenty six fifty three, Revelation eight thirteen. Their appearance varied according to circumstances, but was often brilliant and dazzling. <laughs> Matthew twenty eight two seven and Revelation ten one two. Of the nature 
of fallen angels, the circumstances, the nature of the temptation by which they fell, we know absolutely nothing. <laughs> we have no idea. All that is certain is they left their first estate, and they are now angels of the devil. Matthew twenty five forty one and Revelation twelve seven nine. On the other hand, the title especially assigned to the angels of God, that of the holy ones, 